Hi guys, welcome back to another GJ video and you're probably wondering what the hell this thing is. This is the Bixki Cobra Navigator. Now if you've already followed our channel, you probably saw we did the time lapse build video on this which actually went much better than what I thought. I thought everyone was sort of going to smash the video about too much RGB, this is some weird looking thing no one will uh, ever buy. But um, it is reasonably priced, I'll cover that later on. But in saying that, I don't think Bixki have cut any corners. The quality of this chassis, test bench, whichever you want to call it, is really good. It's all got chamfered CNC uh, aluminum all on the top plate, the legs, and then it's got the acrylic sandwich in the middle, which is nicely frosted and it diffuses all the LEDs in it. And what you saw at the start with all the RGB, that is included in this test bench. So what you see is what you get. The only modification I did was added the power button uh, sort of on the top because it doesn't come with one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sort of check out this case, uh, go into it in a bit more detail, and then I'll sort of come back with any issues and sort of the things I liked and so on. The Cobra Navigator comes flat packed with decent packaging. Here we can see the individual parts and how the unit is made. There are four main parts to the chassis and each leg is secured into the small cutouts with two screws for each. It took me about 10 minutes to assemble the chassis and no instruction manual was supplied. An RGB controller is supplied with a remote and this is all you need to hook up all the chassis case lighting. This case definitely isn't for everyone, that's if you would even call it a case, but it does make for one hell of a showpiece or a test bench like no other. Coming in at just under 6 kilograms, it's probably heavier than you thought. That's because the whole chassis is made from 6mm thick aluminum for the base plate and 9mm aluminum for the legs. Then we find 10mm thick acrylic sandwiched in the middle that creates the crazy lighting effects the chassis has. The lighting comes included in the 155 US dollar price tag and when you think about it, all the aluminum you're getting and so on, the price doesn't seem so bad. As I said above, you're probably not going to ditch your current PC case for something like this and because the Cobra is more like a test bench, features and support is limited. You can fit up to EATX motherboards and there's plenty of cable routing around the motherboard on the base plate. As the motherboard standoffs are quite high, cables can easily be fed under the motherboard as well. Storage support is very limited on the Cobra with no areas for 2.5 inch or 3.5 inch hard drives apart from the one 3.5 inch hard drive bracket above the power supply. M.2 storage is really all you're left with for the stock config. While underneath, this is where your PSU is installed via a bracket, power supply length is unlimited. For water cooling support, you'll find a single 360mm radiator bracket underneath supporting 120, 240 or a 360mm radiator. I was able to fit in a 60mm thick 360 radiator in my build with still room to spare. In my build, I also ordered the optional extra distro plate designed specifically for this chassis. Take note of the optional extra as it does not come with the chassis by default. This distro channel was also used in the build you may have seen at the Bixi 2019 Computex booth. You're looking at roughly $250 US just for this extra part. Keep note that when using the distro channel, you will not be able to install EATX motherboards as they are just too wide. Moving on to the case lighting and this is where the Cobra shines. I guess if you're interested in this chassis, it's lighting probably caught your eye. I guess you could always turn it off if you don't like it. Each leg of the Cobra comes pre-installed with a digital RGB strip and the cable pops out at the top. One of the best lighting implementations I've seen and the cable mess really is kept to a minimum. Now as I said earlier, you're probably not going to swap your main system for something like this, but for someone like me or other enthusiasts out there that have spare parts, motherboards, uh, video cards that often are testing hardware, it's just a unique little test bench you can sort of slap together and it just gives that nice uh, different look than what we're used to seeing. Now some of the other issues I did have, it does scratch quite easily, so just bear in mind, it's probably the way that the uh, the powder coating has been done. It doesn't seem like a huge layer. What I do uh, recommend doing, I put down a huge mouse pad when I built this system. I also want to give a shout out to Glorious PC Gaming Race. They have sent me a heap of mouse pads and I did use one of those, the white one. Probably not best to use a white one, use a black one and you can build it on that. So then if you're going to be rubbing it on a hard top, you're not going to scratch any of the finish. Um, another thing is there's no I.O. or when I say front I.O. I don't even think there's a particular front to this test bench. Uh, there's no front I.O., there's no audio, there's no USB, there's no power button or so on. Uh, but that's pretty much standard with a lot of test benches these days. Uh, I do think um, 
some companies that do offer USB, it's normally an add-on extra that you need to pay for because a lot of boards these days does have the power and reset on it. As I said, I did add one over on this top side here. I'll get a shot of that. I simply just made a cover plate for a vandal switch and then I just lined it up with one of the holes that was already in the top plate. So that's something you can do. Um, another issue I had, I did mention that all the RGB lighting does come with it. It does come with a controller. But weirdly enough, it's only a four port controller and there are five RGB parts to this chassis. So when I say five RGB parts, five RGB strips. So you've got one in each leg, so that's one, two, three. And then there's two in the base plate. So they're sort of sandwiched in the middle. So I think one does one half, one does the other half, and then they come out. So you've got five ports you need to plug in and the controller only had uh, four. So I'm gonna feed that back to Bisky, see if they can I think that's only because the maximum they have is a four port controller. I did have to split it. I ended up splitting it all into your standard uh, your standard three pin five volt. I have like the XSPC splitter on the back. So I split everything because I think I had nine RGB parts to this chassis. I had the five from the uh, case, uh, one from the f uh, for the three fans, one lot for the fans because I joined them together. Uh, one for the video card, one for the uh, CPU block, so yeah, there was a heap going in and then I just used a big splitter and it all went in. And by doing that, by bringing it to the standard five volt, uh, three pin standard, I was able to run it off the motherboard. So that's why you saw everything was in sync. Uh, I even added the memory into the loop. Uh, so the whole system, the motherboard, the CPU block and the GPU block, everything was in sync. So um, that was pretty sweet to be able to do with that. But yeah, overall, it's just a fun little case to play around with. Uh, Price-wise, I mentioned earlier, it was 155 US dollars, so that equates to 225 Australian. Now that's probably one of the cheapest test benches I have ever used. There's a lot of other ones from other companies, and surprisingly, test benches are quite expensive. I just think because they're sort of a proprietary part, uh, they're a specialty item, they're not just a standard run-of-the-mill case, they do require special parts. But um, I think this one here is probably the highest quality out of all of them I've used. Uh, just the way it's used, it's machined, it doesn't have a lot of features, as I said, not many uh, storage compartments, things like that and so on. Like, I don't know what I'll do with this, I don't know if I'll leave it up as an actual test bench, but it does look cool. It is hard to photograph and film because there's really three or four sides to it. There's not just like a front and a back. Um, I'm even thinking that when I'm done with it, I'll strip it down, leave it empty, and I might just hang it on the wall somewhere and just let the, the lighting light up. It just looks like a cool little feature. But yeah, that's pretty much it on this video. I want to thank Bisky for sending this out to check out. It is a cool little thing. I'll see if I can find a link to where you can purchase it. You might have to get it from AliExpress, maybe Amazon, or maybe Bisky Direct. I'm not sure. But anyway, I hope you like this video, and stay tuned for more videos in the future.